Most drivers think cleaning an oxygen sensor is easy. A little spray, a quick wipe, maybe a soak, and it's good as new. But that simple fix can destroy a perfectly good sensor in minutes. Once it's damaged, your car burns more fuel, loses power, and runs rough. What starts as maintenance becomes a costly mistake. These sensors are incredibly delicate, and one wrong move can throw your whole engine off balance. So stick around. We're breaking down the seven biggest mistakes drivers make when cleaning oxygen sensors. Watch till the end. There's a bonus tip for you. It will save you money and your sensor. Number seven, soaking the oxygen sensor in gasoline or fuel. Some DIY videos swear that soaking an oxygen sensor in gasoline can melt away the carbon buildup. It sounds quick and clever, but it's actually one of the worst things you can do to your engine. The oxygen sensor isn't just a piece of metal sitting in your exhaust. It's a delicate part coated with protective materials that help it read oxygen levels accurately. When you soak it in fuel, the gasoline eats through those coatings and seeps into the small ceramic element inside. Once that happens, the sensor can no longer tell how much oxygen is in the exhaust, and your engine loses its sense of balance. A bad sensor means rough idling, poor mileage, and higher emissions. Some drivers even notice their check engine light flashing shortly after trying this so-called cleaning hack. Several experts have said clearly that no safe oxygen sensor cleaner exists that can be poured or sprayed through the engine. The only proper way to handle it is the old-fashioned way. Take it out and inspect it. If the tip looks glazed, oily, or melted, don't waste time trying to save it. Replace it. But if there's just a thin layer of dry soot, lightly wipe the outside with a clean, soft cloth. Before replacing, confirm with a scan tool or multimeter to make sure it's truly bad. To put it best, if it's contaminated or damaged, replacement is the only real fix. But some drivers still try another so-called shortcut, thinking a quick blast of brake cleaner will do the trick. Number 6. Spraying brake cleaner on the sensor tip Using aerosol cleaners on an oxygen sensor might sound like a fast way to bring it back to life, but it almost always ends in damage. Carb or brake cleaner is way too strong for this part. These chemicals are designed to cut through grease and heavy buildup on metal, not to be sprayed onto something as sensitive as a sensor coated with platinum. When they hit the surface, they strip off that thin layer of platinum and eat into the ceramic element beneath it. Once that coating is gone, the sensor can no longer read oxygen levels accurately, and that's when engine performance starts to go downhill. Another problem is residue. Even after the liquid dries, tiny traces of chemicals can stay behind. That residue can alter how the sensor reacts to exhaust gases, making the readings inconsistent. Most car manufacturers warn against using wire brushes or any aerosol cleaners for this exact reason. Cleaning like that doesn't work, it just ruins the part faster. If there's only light soot on the metal housing, a simple wipe with a clean, dry cloth is enough. Be careful not to touch the tip or the inner sensing element. If the tip looks oily, dark, or heavily blackened, that usually points to another issue, like an oil leak or a rich fuel mixture. In that case, fix the underlying problem first, then replace the sensor. When it comes to oxygen sensors, less cleaning means longer life. Still, some people can't resist adding one more step, blasting it with high-pressure air to dry it faster. Number 5. Blasting the sensor with high-pressure air or air hose Using a high-pressure air hose on an oxygen sensor might feel like a harmless way to dry it off or blow away dust, but it can do serious damage inside. Most oxygen sensors are designed with tiny air channels that help them breathe and measure oxygen levels accurately. When those channels are hit with strong air pressure, debris and leftover cleaner can get forced deep inside, clogging the pathways that keep the sensor working. Bosch and other major manufacturers have made it clear. Blowing air into or through a sensor 
can ruin that reference air system completely. Once that path is contaminated, the sensor starts giving false readings. The car's computer then adjusts the air fuel ratio based on bad data, which can lead to rough idling, wasted fuel, and higher emissions. Even if the sensor seems fine right after, that internal damage often shows up later, when it's already too late to fix. The correct method is much simpler. Never use compressed air or any forced airflow. If the sensor is a little damp because you've been cleaning nearby, just let it dry naturally. Avoid using heat, as that can cause the metal and ceramic inside to expand unevenly and crack. And if there's contamination from oil or coolant, drying won't help. That sensor needs to be replaced. A little patience here saves you from replacing a sensor that would have lasted much longer if left alone. The next mistake happens when cleaning turns into scrubbing. But before we get into it, make sure to hit like and subscribe to our channel for more interesting car care tips. We've got some incredible videos coming up that you won't want to miss. Number 4. Scrubbing or using wire brushes. Scrubbing or sanding an oxygen sensor might seem like a good way to refresh it, but it actually destroys the very part that makes it work. The tip of the sensor is coated with a super thin layer of platinum, and that coating is what helps detect the oxygen levels in your exhaust. The moment you sand it, wire brush it, or even scrape it too hard, that layer gets stripped off. Without it, the sensor can't send accurate signals to the car's computer, and suddenly your engine starts running inefficiently or throwing check engine lights. Manufacturers are very clear about this. Bosch, Denso, and others all warn against any mechanical cleaning on the sensor tip. They compare it to handling delicate glass. Even a small scratch can ruin it. If there's heavy carbon buildup, don't risk it by trying to scrub it away. A damaged sensor will cost you more in fuel waste and performance loss than a new one ever would. For light soot around the metal shield, use only a soft microfiber cloth and avoid touching the sensing area entirely. Even tiny particles or oils from your hands can interfere with how it reads exhaust gases. When in doubt, replace it. Oxygen sensors aren't meant to be polished or restored. Once the coating is compromised, the only reliable fix is installing a new one. But sensors don't just fail from scrubbing. Some get ruined by what's sprayed around them. Number 3. Spraying WD-40 or Silicone Products Spraying WD-40 or silicone products anywhere near an oxygen sensor can cause serious problems inside the engine system. These sprays release oil and silicone vapors that can settle on the sensor's internal surfaces. Once that residue forms, it interferes with how the sensor reads oxygen levels, a condition known as sensor poisoning. Over time, those same vapors can even make their way to the catalytic converter, coating it with a thin film that blocks its ability to clean exhaust gases. What started as a quick maintenance trick can easily turn into an expensive repair. The right way to handle it is simple. Never spray lubricants, sealants, or any kind of oil-based product near the sensing tip or electrical connector. If the sensor doesn't already come with a pre-coated thread compound, apply only a small amount of anti-seize on the threads and keep it far away from the tip. Many Bosch and Denso sensors already come treated from the factory, so extra product isn't needed. Avoid anything labeled silicone around exhaust parts, as the fumes can travel and contaminate the system. Connectors should stay completely clean and dry, no grease or oil inside them, ever. When gaskets or sealants are necessary, always choose ones that say sensor safe right on the label. A few careful minutes here can save both the sensor and the catalytic converter from long-term damage. Still, even with the right products, things can still go wrong if the sensor isn't installed correctly. Number 2. Incorrect Reinstallation Methods Reinstalling an oxygen sensor might seem like a simple job, but one small mistake can cut its life in half. 
Many sensors fail not because they were bad to begin with, but because of what happens during installation. Using too much anti-seize, over-tightening the threads, or letting the wires rest too close to hot exhaust parts are some of the most common reasons a fresh sensor burns out early. The sensor housing is made to seal tight on its own, and when the threads are coated too heavily or twisted too hard, the heat from the exhaust can cause expansion that cracks the ceramic or damages the tip. Another mistake people make is using universal sensors and splicing the wires to fit. That might save a few bucks up front, but it's a gamble that often ends with a check engine light. Each vehicle's wiring and resistance levels are slightly different, so mismatched sensors send the wrong signals to the ECU causing poor performance and fuel economy. The right way to reinstall is straightforward. Disconnect the battery before starting. Always use a torque wrench and tighten to the specified value, usually between 30 and 35 foot-pounds. Route the wires neatly and keep them away from any heat or moving parts. When everything's in place, clear any fault codes and let the ECU complete a few drive cycles to adapt to the new sensor. Following these steps keeps even a new sensor working as long as it should. But sometimes, it's not about how the sensor is installed, it's about knowing when to stop trying to save one that's already done for. Number 1. Avoiding Replacement A lot of drivers try to save money by cleaning an old oxygen sensor instead of replacing it but that's one shortcut that never pays off. Once a sensor has aged, it usually fails from the inside, not the outside. The heater element burns out, the inner ceramic gets coated with fuel or oil residue, or the sensor's response simply slows down after years of exposure to heat and exhaust gases. Spraying it, soaking it, or wiping it won't bring those parts back to life. What happens instead is the engine keeps running on bad data, and that poor air fuel mix ends up hurting mileage, performance, and even the catalytic converter. According to experts, cleaning oxygen sensors is never recommended. They warn that tampering with a worn sensor can change how it reads oxygen levels, which can throw off the entire combustion process. If your car's sensor has crossed 60,000 to 100,000 miles, or if your OBD2 scanner shows flat or slow readings, replacement is the only real fix. Always use an OEM or trusted brand like Bosch, Denso, or NTK. These sensors are built to match factory specs and restore proper fuel balance. After installing the new one, clear any fault codes and let the ECU relearn over a few drive cycles. Bosch's own technical bulletins confirm it. Once a sensor is contaminated or worn out, no amount of cleaning can restore it. Replacement keeps your engine efficient, clean, and running right. And that brings us to one final trick that can save you even more in the long run. The bonus tip we promised. Check your oxygen sensor's heater circuit. Even if the tip looks spotless, a weak heater can make the sensor slow to wake up, sending bad data to the ECU during those first few minutes on the road. Use a multimeter to test resistance. If it's out of spec, replace the sensor. A lazy heater might not look broken, but it's wasting fuel and killing performance. And that's a wrap. Oxygen sensors aren't meant to be scrubbed, soaked, or sprayed. Treat them gently and replace them when it's time. Did you find the video helpful? Let us know in the comments below and click here for our next insightful video. Thanks for watching.